A new giant theropod just stomped on the mega theropod hierarchy. It's older than T-Rex and just as big. Let's dive in and analyze Tyrannosaurus macrensis. Dalman et al. 2024, published January 11th, describes a new species of Tyrannosaurus. And no, this isn't the Imperator Regina debacle of 2022. This paper officially names T. macrensis, a giant southern relative of T. rex. T. macrensis is known from the Hall Lake Formation in New Mexico. The layer beneath it was radiometrically dated to about 73 million years ago. Assuming normal sedimentation rates, that makes it 5 to 7 million years older than Tyrannosaurus rex proper, although more detailed dating tests would narrow that down. The material consists of a dentary and some cranial material. That doesn't sound like much, but the authors compared each individual bone side by side with the corresponding elements in T-Rex and discovered that they were quite different. The dentary especially is much longer and less curved posteriorly, but has a thick, robust chin. The curve of its jaw viewed from above indicates that it had a massively built skull like T-Rex, but its longer dentary might mean a wider gape. Overall, it's like a morphological smoothie that blends T-Rex, Tarbosaurus, and Zhusheng Tyrannus together into one gigantic predator. This specimen, NMMNHP3698, was originally referred to T-Rex in the 1980s, but likely represents a new species. Even accounting for individual morphological changes in T-Rex specimens, Macrensis still looks very distinct when comparing the dentary and cranial elements discovered so far. As the authors state, each bone has at least one diagnostic character, and it is therefore an outlier from all other specimens referred to T-Rex in every element. If just one bone were weird, that would be something else, but every bone is different from T-Rex in at least one way. What did this new super predator live with? Other dinosaurs recovered from the Hall Lake Formation include the large Chasmosaurian Ceraceratops, a huge Edmontosaurian, and a Titanosaur referred to Alamosaurus. The sauropod material is several million years later in the formation, so they likely didn't coexist. It's actually suggested by the authors that Tyrannosaurus macrensis predates the arrival of Titanosaurus to North America entirely, which explains why we don't have large-bodied Tyrannosaurs there that seem adapted for sauropod hunting. They evolved huge, bulky, crushing apparatus to take on armored prey like Ceratopsians, and when sauropods entered the scene, they don't seem to have adapted to take on the new food source. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The paper doesn't argue that Macrensis is the ancestor of Rex. Rather, they suggest that it represents a side branch, like an uncle, and that it coexisted with Rex's direct ancestor for some time before Rex proper showed up. They hypothesize that the bulky, massive skulled Tyrannosaurians originated in southern Laramidia and dispersed to the north, some of which crossed the land bridge into Asia and became Zhusheng Tyrannus and Tarbosaurus. They also say it's possible that Tyrannosaurians came from Laramidia, dispersed into Asia, and then back dispersed into North America, but the lack of good information on Zhusheng Tyrannus makes it difficult to fully support one hypothesis over the other. This, combined with giant titanosaur, chasmosaur, and hadrosaur material, suggests that many of the famous giant late Cretaceous dinosaurs evolved to be huge in the southern area of North America and then gradually moved north. Interestingly, the geographical area that T. macrensis was in was relatively small, since it was before the major retraction of the Western Interior Seaway. So they grew huge despite limited space, perhaps to take advantage of the large herbivores, although we don't know why they were big either. Speaking of size, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that T. macrensis was gigantic. But how big exactly was it? Dentary scaling is far from the best method to determine an animal's body size, especially in theropods, but the paper provides enough measurements that we can at least get a rough idea. The holotype dentary measures 645 millimeters from tip to the back of the coronoid process, and would be about 900 millimeters total length and complete according to the paper. The authors compare that to Amon H. 5027, the holotype for T-Rex, and to Scotty, one of the largest T-Rex specimens. Macrensis' dentary is 9% longer than the Amon H dentary and 1% shorter than Scotty's. Scaling isometrically from volumetric models for those two specimens results in a 10.2 to 10.4 ton range. That seems gigantic, but it's likely too high. There are T-Rex individuals with dentaries longer than Scotty's that are smaller, like Sue and Stan. I'd say that a safer range is between 9 and 10 tons for Macrensis, given the high variability in dentary scaling. We don't know what its proportions were in terms of postcranial material, but it was certainly T-Rex sized. Even going with that 9 to 10 ton range, Tyrannosaurus Macrensis would be bigger than the Gigantosaurus holotype, Spinosaurus, Carcronotosaurus, and Saurophaganax. That means that out of the top five biggest theropods, two of them are species of Tyrannosaurus. T-Rex is at the top, followed by the Giga Dentary, which has the same scaling issues. T. Macrensis would be in third place, then Saurophaganax, then Carcrodontosaurus and Spinosaurus are tied for fifth. 
It is worth mentioning that not every paleontologist is convinced there's already some pretty major pushback against this study. Thomas Carr, a Tyrannosaur expert at Carthage College, commented that he'd seen the specimen before and hadn't noticed anything different about it. He cited ontogeny and individual variation as the factors responsible for any diagnostic characters, and labeled the new study the latest in Tyrannosaur fanfiction. Thomas Holtz, another Tyrannosaur Tom, seems to support the study's results. Only time will tell if this new species will stick around. What do you think? Is the evidence for a new species convincing, or is it just another specimen of T. rex? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe for updates. And join the channel so I can keep bringing you paleontology videos. I'm the Vividin, and I'll see you next time.